This is a tutorial for Unreal Editor 2 for the original Unreal Tournament Game of the Year edition. In this video, we will cover triggers and doors. In a previous video, I showed you how to make a lift, which is a mover here on the ground, but now this time I would like to make a door to cover this doorway that I have here. And my personal preference is to have two doors. So that is to say this one here and this one here, and I would like them to open sideways out. But as the mapper, you can do doors in many different ways. So let me show you what I did with this one. To make these two movers, I created two different cubes. And let me show you the texture package. It's from Nally Castle. And I took this one here because this texture is 128 units wide, which is the width of my doorway. And there's a nice line in the middle where I can make a cut and cut this into two different brushes. So I have my two brushes here, but when you originally make them, the textures are not going to be aligned properly. So let me just show you a quick trick. You click on the texture. You come up here to where it says Surface Properties, and then you use the U is horizontal, V is vertical, and you click on this, and you keep going until it's aligned properly. Then you close that. And then you have to do the same trick on the other side as well. So then I made these two brushes. These, these are each 64 units wide and 160 high. I intersected them and then created these two brushes here. So right now they're just movers and let me show you what you do next with the trigger. You come into the actor class browser to the triggers family and then choose the normal plain vanilla trigger and then all you need to do is just click and add a trigger. So that's pretty easy. So let me show you the one that I made. Here's the trigger. And the only way that the trigger knows what the tag is if it shares the same tag as those two movers. So let's go to the two movers. Hold down the control key. Right click. Properties, Events, Tag, and they both have the same tag called Grape. The second thing you need to do is go into Object, and where it says Initial State, by default it will say as a Bump Opened Timed, but now you're going to change it to Trigger Control. And what that means is that as long as a trigger is activated, the doors will stay open, which is what I want. The next thing I changed is in the mover. I made the doors open super quick. So this is 0.5 seconds. You can adjust this depending on your map, but I wanted this to open very quickly because I don't want it to come into contact with the player. And then the trigger needs to have the same tag. So if you go to your trigger, you right click properties, events and there it is the event is called grape and that matches the the two movers and then under trigger this is the default which is fine which means that the trigger will be activated by the player's proximity to that trigger and how do you adjust that well you come into collision and normally by default these are each 40 uh, collision height 40 collision radius 40 but I changed this to 160 and I'm going to show you why here in the gray bar in the top view you right click go to actors radii view and that is to imply the radius of the actor and now that you can see it on the screen here there's that little red circle and it shows that it completely covers the area outside the door right here and then the area just inside the door as well. So if the player is standing anywhere in this radius, it will 
activate this trigger and the trigger will keep those two doors open. So let's try that out. So there's my door with the two textures. And as I approach the door, it'll stay open because I used trigger control. And as long as I'm standing here, those doors will stay open. And I put, just uh, for fun, I put these two little side walls here so that a player could be hiding here and waiting to ambush somebody when they come in to pick up the ammo. So that's the basic trigger. I like to use triggers for doors because if I'm a player and I'm running full speed, grab the ammo, run full speed, I don't want that door to be interfering with my movement, so I prefer to use a trigger for that. The next thing I'm going to show you is a dispatcher. So a dispatcher is going to be triggered by a normal trigger. This trigger here in green is going to be identical to the other one in terms of you have to change the collision radius and you need to give it a, uh, an event. And it's the dispatcher that's the fun part. So the dispatcher, if I right click on that, properties, the dispatcher has this thing called out delays and out events. And these events are going to match the tags of whatever you may have, whether it be a mover or a special event. And then these ones here are the delays in seconds before it activates these events. So in this case, it's going to, when you hit the trigger, it's going to wait one second and then do the first event, which is called orange. Wait another second and do the second event, which is called monster. So very quickly, let me show you where you find the dispatcher. You go to actor browser under triggers, dispatcher. So what's my first event? My first event is going to be this mover, which I made in a previous tutorial. So I'm going to click on that. So that one's called orange. This is an events tag orange. Then you have to come into object, change that to trigger open timed instead of bump open timed and then all the rest of the normal mover properties which I covered in a previous tutorial. So that's the first one that's going to be hit by that dispatcher. The second one is over here and this is something new. This is called special event and in this case the special event is I want to play a sound the sound is here in the announcer pack. It's called uh, Monster Kill. So I put that there. I want to play a little message, which only the player will see, which says Monster Kill on there. This event, I have an event tag called Monster. And in the object, I want to play the sound effect. So that's key as well. Now, what I did is because in the game, you are not going to see any of these pieces. And by the way, special events are in the same place. You go to actor, triggers, special event. So in game, you are not going to see any of these pieces. So you will need something like either a, a visible button, or in this case, I just very quickly used a 2D sheet here to make uh, just to show you where it's going to be. Normally you should align that to the floor, but I just did this for the tutorial. And so you will need something visual in the game so the player knows, oh, I have to come here, push this button, and when I push this button, a whole bunch of events are going to be triggered. So let's try this in game as well. So the trigger is here in this landing pad texture. Monster kill, kill, kill. 
So you can see that when I stepped in this area, it first triggered this one after a one second delay, and then after another second delay, it played the sound effect right around here approximately, so that any, any players in this area will hear that sound effect, but not through the whole map. Monster kill, kill, kill. So with the dispatcher, you can see how you have a maximum of eight different events that you could stack up here. And if you have something even more complex, then basically what you'll need to do is take this dispatcher and then trigger another one, and then you'll get another eight events and so on. So it don't feel like you're restricted to eight, but if you go more than eight, you'll need multiple dispatchers as well. So with the combination of triggers, dispatchers, and special events, it's very handy if you're making a single player map or making a map for Assault or some other mod, a third party mod like Monster Hunt as an example. So these are very, very handy and really for fun too, if you're making an Easter egg in your deathmatch map, you can use these as well. So there's lots of good uses for that. And secondly, for, for doors, of course, I recommend using a trigger to open the door. In the description below, I'm going to post a link for some more website tutorials where you can do further research. Happy mapping.